In this video we'll have a look at the thyroid gland and the process of thyroid hormone production. The thyroid gland is located at the front of your neck, located below the larynx, on both sides of, and anterior to the trachea. The anterior parts is referred to as the isthmus, it connects the lobes anteriorly. This gland secretes hormones that govern many of the metabolic and growth functions in your body. The hormones are called thyroxine and triiodothyronine. Commonly called T4 and T3, respectively. Inside the thyroid gland, follicle structures can be found. Follicular epithelial cells surround the follicle, and the substance in the follicle is also referred to as the colloid. The follicular cells play a role in the production of the thyroid hormones. Under the influence of a hormone secreted by the anterior pituitary gland, which is called thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, the thyroid will manufacture and secrete T3 and T4 thereby raising their blood levels. The thyroid gland also secretes calcitonin, an important hormone for calcium metabolism, which we are not going to discuss in this video. To form normal quantities of thyroxine, 1 mg ingested iodine per week, in the form of iodides, are required, we will see later why this is the case. About one-fifth of ingested iodides are selectively removed from the circulating blood by the cells of the thyroid gland and used for synthesis of the thyroid hormones. The iodides first have to leave the circulation and enter the thyroid cells. This is achieved by the action of a sodium iodide supporter, or NIS, which co-transports one iodide ion along with two sodium ions across the basolateral membrane into the thyroid cell. This supporter uses the sodium gradient that is created by another pump, the sodium potassium ATPase pump, which pumps sodium out of the cell. The result of this is a low intracellular sodium concentration and a gradient for facilitated diffusion of sodium and iodide into the cell. The process of increasing the concentration of iodide in the cells is also referred to as iodide trapping. Once inside the follicular epithelial cells, iodide is transported into the follicle, across the apical membrane. This is done by a transporter molecule called pendrin. Also, large glycoprotein molecules, called thyroglobulin, are secreted into the follicle. They contain tyrosine amino acids to which the iodide ions will bind. When thyroglobulin and iodide combine, the thyroid hormones form. Thus, simply said, T3 and T4 are produced within the thyroglobulin molecule. The combination of iodide and thyroglobulin occurs in a few steps. First of all, conversion of the iodide ions to an oxidized form of iodine. This process is promoted by the enzyme peroxidase. The second step is organification of thyroglobulin, which means the iodination of tyrosine and formation of the thyroid hormones. Tyrosine is first iodized to monoiodyrosine, containing just one iodine, and then to dienetyrosine, containing two iodine. His process results in both monoiodyrosine, MIT, and dienetyrosine, DIT. In the next step, the MIT and DIT will couple with one another, producing both T3 and T4 molecules, which basically are formed by either a MIT combined with a DIT or two molecules of DIT combined. Note that the T3 and T4 are still attached to the thyroglobulin molecule. Another important thing to remember is the fact that not all DIT and MIT will combine, therefore, the current thyroglobulin will contain all before mentioned forms, so MIT, DIT, T3 and T4. Also the proportions in T3 and T4 are different, each thyroglobulin molecule contains up to 30 thyroxine, or T4, molecules and just a few triiodothyronine or T3, molecules. 
Interestingly, in this form, the thyroid hormones are stored in the follicles in an amount sufficient to supply the body with its normal requirements of thyroid hormones for two to three months. Therefore, when synthesis of thyroid hormone is decreased, the physiologic effects of deficiency are not observed for several months. Now we will have a look at the process of releasing the hormones into the circulation. The apical surface of the thyroid cells will close around the thyroglobulins. This gives rise to panacidic vesicles in the cells. The vesicles will fuse with lysosomes to digest and cleave the thyroglobin molecules and release T3 and T4 in free form. These T3 and T4 molecules will diffuse into the surrounding capillaries, so they enter the blood circulation. In the circulation, they will combine with plasma proteins known as thyroxine binding globulin. Because about 75% of the iodinated tyrosine in the thyroglobulin will remain monoiodated erosine and diiodated erosine. This is not functional and therefore should not enter the circulation. Instead, the iodine is cleaved from them by a diiodinase enzyme, making the iodine available for recycling in new hormones. About 93% of the thyroid hormone released from the thyroid gland is normally T4 and only 7% is T3. However, in the peripheral tissues, T4 will be turning into T3 for a great part, it's deiodinated. So, simply said, the function of the thyroid gland is to take iodide, found in many foods, and convert it into thyroid hormones, thyroxine, T4 and triiodothyronine T3. So what is the role of these thyroid hormones actually? The general effect of thyroid hormone is to activate nuclear transcription of large numbers of genes, hereby causing a higher basic metabolic rate, mainly through induction of increased protein synthesis. The net result is generalized increase in functional activity throughout the body. Increased activity is for example seen in the cardiovascular system, growth rate, and the central nervous system. Without thyroxine and triiodothyronine from the thyroid gland, almost all the chemical reactions of the body would become sluggish and the person would become sluggish as well. A final, clinically important, thing to know, during development inside the womb, the thyroid gland originates in the back of the tongue but it normally migrates to the front of the neck before birth. Sometimes it fails to migrate properly and is located high in the neck or even in the back of the tongue. Another rare phenomenon is the thyroid migrating too far and ending up in the chest. Do you want to know how the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland are regulating the thyroid hormone production? Click on this picture to be directed to that video or find the link in the description of this video. I hope you liked this video. If you have any additions or questions, do not hesitate to comment below. Also it would be great if you could like and share this video, helping others to understand this topic. Subscribe to not miss any new videos, and if you have any suggestions for topics that you find hard or cannot find good explanations for, just mention it below. Thank you for watching.